In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can implement intermittent fasting for fat loss. I'm also going to take you through a sample day of eating, so how I implement intermittent fasting personally. We're gonna cover the most common questions that pop up as well as towards the end of the video. I'm going to cover the single biggest mistake that I see folks making when they implement IF. But first things first, what is intermittent fasting? It's essentially just designated periods of time that you go without eating and designated periods of time where you do eat. Now, the most common setup is what's called a 16-8 setup. So that means you eat for eight hours and you do not eat for 16 hours. The 16-8 setup typically just looks like skipping breakfast because it's far easier to skip than dinner from a behavioral and social aspect because breakfast we tend to eat solo more often and dinner we have with friends and family. Personally, when I implement IF, I skip breakfast just because it works with my lifestyle really well, but there is no right or wrong here. Just go with whatever works best for you. IF can be a great tool for fat loss just because when we reduce the time in which we eat per day, we tend to either consciously or subconsciously reduce our calorie intake and fewer calories equates to fat loss. A few other benefits worth mentioning, mental clarity and focus, which makes complete sense from an evolutionary standpoint because the number one priority of the human species or any animal for that matter is survival and survival is dependent on calorie intake. So it only makes sense to be more mentally clear when calories aren't in the mix because that will make it more likely that we are able to obtain calories via hunting and foraging. Another cool benefit is digestion related because going for periods without eating gives your body a chance to digest all of that food that you've already consumed. Digestion takes time. Fasting also ramps up something called autophagy, auto meaning self, phagy meaning eating, which is just a fancy word for taking out the garbage on a cellular level. So it gives your body a chance to clean up that cellular debris damaged protein, stuff like that, which is just a byproduct of living and breathing on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the last benefit and the thing that we can't really measure via scientific studies and things like that is something that I like to call food freedom. Myself, as well as virtually all of my clients that have chosen to implement some intermittent fasting here and there, have gained food freedom in the sense that they aren't reliant on that square breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three meals a day, every day, and instead they're able to work food around their day versus their day around food. Now, before we get to a few of the most common questions, I had dinner at 6 p.m. last night. It is now 11 a.m. the following morning, so it is time to break the fast. All right, we've got six whole eggs, half of a huge avocado, a bunch of salt, and all of this fruit. Now, the first common question that tends to pop up is, can I drink coffee while I'm fasting? And the answer is yes. You can have coffee in technically any zero calorie beverage. Tea works too. I would recommend sticking with coffee, tea, putting nothing in it or going with water. And if you don't like the taste of plain water, feel free to add something like freshly squeezed lemon or lime. Another common question is, am I going to lose muscle? Unfortunately, the answer is no. As long as you continue to provide a stimulus, so a reason for your muscle to stick around, i.e. weight training, you'll be fine. Can I exercise fasted? Absolutely. I do it on a regular basis. I actually went for a run fasted this morning. Is my body going to go into starvation mode when I start fasting? Starvation mode is the idea that when you limit calories too much, your body conserves fat and you can't lose weight. And I've got good news on this front as well. Starvation mode does not exist because if it did, starvation wouldn't be a thing. Now, Marcus, what if I get hungry? I've got three words for you. Coffee, tea, and water. Just be mindful of your caffeine intake because you don't wanna consume so much caffeine as to where it impacts your sleep in a negative way. Also, if you feel hunger crop up, going for a walk is an amazing way to regulate the appetite and also just to get you out of the house where there's food at arm's reach. Now you may be wondering how long will it take to adjust to this hunger? Hunger works off of a circadian rhythm. Circa meaning about, dia meaning day. And so your body gets hungry at the times in which you feed it. So if you have breakfast like clockwork, Every single day at 9 a.m., you're gonna get hungry at 9 a.m. Now, fortunately, the body adapts to fasting quite quickly. And what I've seen in my clients is that five to seven days, as long as you stay consistent, should be about the time frame that you're looking at, but just know that there is an adjustment period. It just doesn't last all that long. And here is dinner. We've got two beautiful steak fillets with a whole bunch of salt, as well as some unflavored Greek yogurt and grapes. What is the biggest mistake that I see in terms of implementing IF when folks start out? It is without a doubt, throwing food quality out the window. It's still important to emphasize food quality and favor single ingredient whole foods for three reasons. The first one is health. 
The second one is digestion. And the third one is you can still gain weight on an intermittent fasting approach if you consume too many calories in your eating window. The concept of calories in, calories out still applies, always has, always will. There is nothing fancy or special going on with IF in terms of the metabolism. If you like this video and you found it helpful, I think you might also like this one.